catch the fire. Receive the power. Spread the word. We now invite you to join the Church of Pentecost on a sponsored religious program, The Pentecost Hour. Once again, your favorite program, In my soul. So parents should have the word of God on their heart and then they should leave it in their homes. They should leave it. If you don't leave it, your child will not know that you are faithful in whatever you are doing. So you should not only speak about it, but having it in your life and then leaving it out for the children to see. One sister spoke from an external branches. She was a deaconess of the church. And she told us this story herself. It's something that happened to her. You see, she said that somebody came to them and they started talking about another person in the church. And so the child who was a teenager was listening. Then up to a certain point, he said, Mommy, you people, when we put on dresses, you tell us, don't put on jeans, don't put on that, don't do that. But you are also talking about another person. Is this thing not a sin? As you talk about a fellow Christian, you see, what sort of example are you giving to the child? Talking about others at home. So they listen to whatever you do. And this one too happened to a pastor. The one I'm coming to talk about happened to a pastor. This was not a deaconess or an elder, but a pastor. And a pastor's wife. Somebody brought them some food and then they wouldn't eat it. So one of the children, and I had a daughter, saw it twice or thrice. And then the next time the woman brought it, the daughter was there. He said, Mama, let me tell you. This woman has been bringing food to you and you don't eat it. I see that whenever something is brought, Ghanaian food was brought raw for you to prepare and eat, you go and throw it away. This one, I'm going to tell the woman that when she brings food to you, you don't eat it. You are afraid. You think that she has bewitched the, the, or <laughs> bewitched you or uh, cast a spell or something on the food so you wouldn't eat it. Unless you eat this one, I'm going to tell her. And then the, must, the, the, the mother was shivering. She said, yes, for this one, if you don't eat it, I'll go and tell her. I thank God for the life of that daughter. You know, you can't be a pastor's wife and be a hypocrite. You can't be a pastor, an elder, a deaconess, a member, and be a hypocrite. You need to change from that. Otherwise, one day, the Lord will use a child to expose you Children are very good. They are very, very faithful. They can't tell the lies that sometimes some adult tell. May the Lord God Almighty have mercy on us. That's why they are the children, they are the friends of Jesus. Because Jesus says that if you do not become like a child, you cannot go to heaven. You see? Because if you are growing and you turn, you change from childhood before God to adulthood before God, and you think that you are so matured and then try to bring him tricks, manipulations and other things, and then the devil takes over. The devil takes over. So eventually, the mother cooked that food and ate. And any time after that one, the woman brought food, she used it and ate, and she didn't die. She didn't die. Eh? This person is not good. This person has got this. She is a witch. She is demonized. It's too much in our society. We have to believe in the God we serve, who is far above all things. So this child was able to deliver the mother from that fear. So children 
can perform deliverance. More than adult. And the deliverance they... Pre- uh, <laughs> all right, give them a clap. <laughs> the deliverance they perform is the simple word of God. Whatever the, you tell them from the word of God, they get hold of it and believe it. And once they believe it, it works for them. It works for them. I quite remember one time when I came to Birmingham and there was a program going on at the church of Pastor Caleb, uh, one of our sons in Birmingham. We attended and one child came to testify that somebody was sick. I've forgotten the person that was sick at his form or school. Somebody was sick at school and he asked the person whether he would like prayer. And he said yes. He prayed for the person and the person got healed. Because he had just believed that Jesus can heal. And so when the person was sick, his belief was that once you prayed for the person, the person would get healed. And he demonstrated that and that healing took place. That is wonderful. And even in this year's general council meeting, one of the reports that came to our office and I read it. Um, a, a boy prayed for the father who was almost in a coma and the father was healed. It was a Sunday school child who prayed for the father. So children, take the word of God if you leave it. Teach them, leave it, and then you see them following you. So the Bible is saying that you, it shall be upon your heart as you teach them uh, and, and then teach them diligently and talk of them when you sit. I like that one. When you sit in your house. When you sit in your house. And then when you walk by the way, as you are sitting, speak to them about the word of God. Then when you are walking, talk to them about the word of God. And then even when you lie down, talk to them about the word of God. When you lie down. And when you rise, very, very important. So he wants our minds to be saturated with the word of God. He wants the atmosphere of the home to be full of the word of God. The words that will come from your mouth should all demonstrate the word of God. You should not teach them filthy language and bad language. You shouldn't do that at all. Then you should also teach them about God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is God? Who is the Lord Jesus Christ? What has he done for me? What has he done for humanity? You have to begin to teach them about all these things. Then you realize that as you teach them, they will come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Our current children ministry director, Apostle Fred Tiako, said that he acknowledged the Lord Jesus Christ at age six. And at that time, they said, no, you have to grow before you'll be able to accept God. But then, Pastor Anai, at that time, uh, Apostle Anai of blessed memory, was around. He visited the parents, and then he spoke. And when he spoke at church, the child was touched so much. Sometimes you think that church Children cannot enjoy adult ministry here. They can. So sometimes bring them, join us, let them interact, and you see them picking it more than the adult. And if you, if you ask them some questions, they will be able to answer more than adult. So he said that he picked it from that preaching. And then when he went to a home, he was crying. The parents had said, why? He said, well, I want to accept Jesus. I like the ministration today, and I want to accept him as my Lord. And they said, no, you are too young. When Pastor Anna heard of it, he said, no, let him acknowledge him as his Lord and personal Savior. And then he prayed for him. And he prophesied to him that this child will become a pastor. And indeed now, he is an, an apostle of the Church of Pentecost. So speak to them about the saving knowledge of Christ. You know, once you are able to get them at home and they believe these things, they will face life challenges. It doesn't mean that once you train them, no. They've got different personality traits. 
And some of them are very, very difficult to train. Others are not difficult to train. Some of them accept uh, issues directly. Others would still argue about it. So others may even fall away. But when they meet life challenges and they want a place to go, they would remember what you have taught them. Because it's a seed that has been planted in them. And that seed would by all means germinate. So the Bible says that train a child the way he should go. And when he grows, he will not depart from it. So he would come back. He would come back. Augustine in church history was a very important theologian. The mother Monica was a devout Christian. But Augustine was a philosopher and had put God aside. The more she prayed, the more she thought that the sun was going away. Until one day, the Lord touched the sun and he acknowledged Jesus as his Lord and personal Savior. Even one of the, uh, at that time, we called them general deacons. Now, here you called him your national deacon or your area deacon or regional deacon. Um, one of his sons became a very truant boy. This area deacon or national deacon continued to pray and he could not see the repentance and the coming back of the son to the Lord and he died. But after he died, this young man accepted the Lord as his Lord and personal savior and then has now become a pastor. So um, train him once he's still going out, the seed that you have planted in him would continue to challenge him or her. He wouldn't find it easy. He will, he will be fighting with it. The seed will continue to work on him on, until he or she surrenders to the sovereignty of the Almighty One. Hallelujah. So it is my prayer that you'll be able to teach them in the word of God then leave the word of God with them. And as you do that, they'll be able to pick it. Then the other responsibility is to teach them respect. Teach them respect. And in fact, that is one of the most important lessons that you can teach a child. Trying to help them in their character molding process. You know how they'll be able to say, excuse me, please, and begin to respond to the needs of elders and the needs of their fellow children. You see, you should teach them to, to the point that they will respect humanity, human beings. Very important. Once speaking with an adult, they will respect that. Once speaking with his own fellow child, he will be able to respect the person is very important. How to talk to people gently without insult, not insulting one another is very important. If you are a person full of insults, you realize that they will pick it. And I quite remember when we, uh, our children were very young and we employ a watchman as a regional head uh, at Koforidua in Ghana. Um, then the watchman insulted one of their ch children, I think one of them. And then he ran, Caleb was the one who ran to us and said that, 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 you see the watchman has said, you are a fool. And you said we should never say fool. But he's saying fool, 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 fool. See? <laughs> Train them to the extent that when somebody does something that you have taught them that they shouldn't do, they will know that that is a sin. That is an error. They shouldn't do that. Very important aspect. Teaching them respect. So if you go to a home when the, where the family is broken and parents begin to fight each other, wife insulting the husband, husband insulting the wife, or husband shouting at, 
at, at the wife and the wife also responding, you see that the children pick up. You don't give them good example to follow up. And soon, they will begin to imitate what you do. They begin to demonstrate what you do to them when they go out. And as you are teaching them respect, the respect must begin from respecting you as their parents. They must be able to respect you. That is where the respect, teaching of the respect begins. Once they are able to respect you, then they will be able to respect others. How can they respect you? You must win their respect. So as I'm talking of teaching them respect, the following thing that I'm building upon is that they must win your respect. Your children must win your respect. I've talked about teach them the word of God, and then I've talked about teach them respect, and then I'm handling winning your respect. They must win your respect. If they, do, if they don't win your respect, you cannot teach them respect. So it must be won. Um, how can they win your respect? For instance, in, in a situation where a child requests for, let's say, toffee. You've given a child toffee and you say that I'm going to give you one or two. And then you give that child two because you wanted to give the child two. And then the child finishes eating the two and comes back and say, no, uh, I want additional one. And you say no. And the child begins to whine, cry aloud, and you give in. You've surrendered to the authority of the child. So if you know that the child needs one or two, and you say, I'll give you two, then stick to the two. If you know that you cannot stick to it, then don't tell the child that I'll only give you two. Then you have to give him the number he wants without promising. But once you promise that I'll give you two, then the limit should be two. Whether he cries, winds up, going up and down, shouts, don't surrender. Once you surrender, when the child is crying, the child is saying that I am in authority. And you are saying that I am in authority. So the child said, I want it. And you said, no, you can't. The child said, I am in charge. And then the child begins to cry, shout. So if you give it to the child, yes, didn't I tell you that I am in authority? <laughs> so here, the child wins. And then you begin to lose your respect. So that aspect is important. And you must stick to whatever you promise the child. Once you promise the child, then stick to it. Never deviate. Never surrender. If you can't do it, don't say it at all. Then you must develop the respect. How you can develop respect within uh, your children, the family. Respect is developed through exemplary life of faithfulness and honesty from the parents. If they can win your respect and continue to develop it, it begins from faithfulness and honesty from parents. Um, well, let me pick up this thing from, from many Ghanaians back at home. Um, I don't know how it is here, but sometimes, uh, often when parents are going out, I think even here is, is common. The child will ask you to buy something. Maybe buy a bicycle for me. Maybe buy this thing. Buy a toy or buy something very big. If you know that you can't buy it, don't tell them that you buy it. If, for instance, buy a bicycle, buy this specific thing, and you know that you can't, don't say, I'll buy it, and then when you come, you don't buy it. So tell the child that, I will not be able to buy a bicycle at this time. I will not be able to buy a motorcycle for you. I will not be able to buy a, a car. So the type of thing, the toy that you'll be able to buy, tell the child and buy it for that child. Otherwise, don't tell 
the child at all. And um, two of our grandchildren visited us in Ghana at home. And um, I was traveling. So I, I told them that I will buy them iPad. They, they used mine and, um, and had a problem with it. So I told them that I'm going out. And when I come, I'll buy you iPad. And then they left for their parents. And then when I, when, uh, I kept along, they kept on asking their father, when is granddad coming? And he said, well, maybe two weeks time. They said, oh, it has delayed. They wanted to find out. And he said, why? He said, he promised that he would buy us iPad. He said, but how can you be sure that he will buy it? He said, no, no, no. He told us that he will buy it. So when they heard that we had returned, then quickly they came back. And when they came back, I gave them the children iPad to them. They said, I, we told you that grandpa promises. And we knew that he would buy them. So you should not promise children without fulfilling it. Don't think that they are children. Don't think that they are not very important or it doesn't matter. I traveled to US and visited the home and I heard that when I was visiting, the pastor was working very hard because I wanted to stay at the mission house, the pastor's house. And then um, one of the child asked the, the, I think the youngest one, three children, the youngest one asked them, Dad, what is happening? Because I realized that you are setting the house very, very organized. I've never seen you cleaning here and organizing your books as you are doing now. <laughs> is the chairman coming here? Because national head has come here. But you didn't do these things. <laughs> and they said that they didn't tell them. They said, well, let's, let's work. And they, according to them, they wanted to give them uh, a surprise. So when I arrived, they returned from uh, school. And they said, call the, the youngest one. Who is this one? He said, yes, that's the chairman. I told you that uh, the chairman was coming. That's why you were scrubbing here and cleaning here. <laughs> and then I was going out, and they were sad. So I promised that before I leave, I will come and stay with them. But when we went out, the program almost changed and we needed to go earlier than we had anticipated. But I told them that no. Um, if you need to go earlier, then I promised the children that I would visit them before leaving. So then let's leave here this day, spend that night with them before going. And that was important because I had given my word. Children take those things Serious. So if you promise and you don't fulfill, then they know that oh, when you say something, you don't fulfill. And then they pick that aspect. So you begin to lose your respect. And you don't win their respect for that. You don't win their respect for that. Um, so when, as I gave you an illustration on toffee, you gave a child, you say that, uh, toffee, maybe you've given him one and he takes it and maybe he wants too much and he said, maybe too much of toffee is not good. Brother, I would like you half biscuit. You know, you realize that if you tell them that and you are able to hold on to it and even the child cries, next time when you come around and you give the child one toffee, he said, oh, too much of toffee is not good. Biscuit. So can you give me biscuit? The thing had sticked into the mind. And that is also very important. Then don't give false threat. I will beat you if you do this. I will kill you if you do this. Don't give those threats. You see, um, when we were growing out, there was something in Ghana. And this time it's not very common. I, I don't know the contemporary one. But the thing was called kakai. Kakai. <laughs> I, I think some adults have heard about it. I'd like to know those people who have ever heard of Kakai. Raise up your hands and let me see. Oh, even some children have heard of uh, Kakai. Uh -huh. uh, which is an indication that it seems here also you talk about Kakai. 
Kakai, when you do something, they said, well, Kakai will come and catch you. And then you keep quiet. But if you keep on waiting for Kakai, and Kakai doesn't come, all right, sometimes if you don't keep quiet, and then you keep on shouting, 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 and Kakai doesn't come, then you realize that there's no Kakai. So next time when they say Kakai, oh, you can begin to play and shout because you know that there is no Kakai. So don't promise that if you do this, this thing will happen without it happening. I will beat you without beating the child. No. Speak to the child. Whatever you want to do, do it clearly and frankly. That will benefit the children. Anyway, by the way, Kakai came from the Ashanti kingdom. When I researched into it some time ago, it was one of the kings called Otunfo Kakari. He was Kakari. And then he was very, very powerful. And people were afraid of him because he was using his authority at the highest level so that when he was approaching, people would be shivering. Nana Kakari bo, nana bo, Kakari obo, nana Kakari bo. And then the word Kakari was corrupted to Kakai. <laughs> <laughs> so that is how Kakai came to be. That is it. And then, for instance, what I'm talking about now specifically is developing respect. They have to win your respect, and then you should develop it. And by developing it, you have to be faithful and honest in whatever you do. And one of the things that some mothers also pick up, when they are going out and their children are crying, instead of them talking with them, handing them the mover, sometimes they dodge. Maybe you go and prepare. Go and put on your dress. I will take you along. Go and take your warm clothing. And as they are coming, they go away. So by the time the children, the child would have dressed and come up, the mother had left. You've lost your respect. You've not been faithful. So if you are not going to go with the child, let the child know you are not going to be with the child. And if the child will cry, still let the child cry. If the child cry, even as you leave, later on, the child will know that your word is your bond. Whatever you say is very, very true, and the child will respect you. So you realize that once the child respects you at home, then you'll be able to teach the child respect. Then you'll be able to teach the child the word of God. And then the child will begin to have faith in you, trust you, love you, and also fear you. That fear of reverence. You see, that fear of reverence. That is why when Ephesians was saying that we should not, uh, fathers do not provoke our children, we shouldn't provoke them, well, that is not shouting at them, but bringing up them in the Lord to the, to the point where they will revere you. If they revere you, they trust you, they fear you, this fear is fear of God. Knowing that, yes, once my father has said something, once my mother has said something, he will do it. Uh, my, my, my mother is a faithful person. Uh, my mother is a Christian. She wouldn't do this. She would do this thing. So whatever the child is doing, even if it is evil, the child will know that you wouldn't like it. And what he is doing is against the ethics that you have given to them. So eventually as they begin or the child begins to battle with it, the Holy Spirit will give them the ability to live the life that you want them to live. So beloved in Christ, great and greater responsibility has been placed on parents. We are stewards of the children that God has given to us because the children are children of God. The challenges that they are facing in these modern days are very, very heavy. Heavier than our, fam uh, our time because knowledge has increased and so has crime increased and technology increased. So technology brings sense at the doorstep of their house, not even at the doorstep, but in the chambers of your own house and in their hands. 
Unless you train them in the word of God to the point that when they are watching the wrong thing, they will know that what I'm doing is not good. I should stop it. You will never be able to correct what they are doing. Because wherever they go, you are not there. When they are watching the so-called stars, uh, you are not there. When they are being taught by their teachers, by their friends, you are not there. So make maximum use of the little time that you have with them at home. And once you are able to teach them the word of God, and you are able to teach them respect and win their respect and develop it, when they grow, if life challenges take them away, still the Lord God Almighty, whose seed you have planted in them, will germinate and they will come back to see the God of their fathers. Shall we rise up at this time? Oh, the fire is burning in my soul.